The following is an encore presentation of stories from the Duralong Transformation Centre. At 10 on this Wednesday morning, if you were listening before the news, we were very briefly talking to Jean-Claude. Uh, Jean-Claude, I'll get that right, Jean-Claude? Yes, Jean-Claude. Yeah, um, from the Duralong Transformation Centre. Look, I'm going to ask about your name to begin with. It's not really an Australian type of name, is it, Jean-Claude? Uh, no, it's not. Where does that come from? Uh, so my, my, my father's from Mauritius, mm. uh, which is a French colony, so yeah, ah, French right. French name. Yeah, okay, so that's where the Jean-Claude comes from. It's French. Yes. From from Mauritius. Uh, have you got family back in Mauritius? Yes, I do. Do you uh, get to visit them? Uh, I haven't been back for a while now, but uh, hopefully in the future I'd like to, yeah. Yeah, oh, well, that'd be great. It's one of those destinations that people go on holiday to so it must be really really beautiful it's an island isn't it in the indian ocean yes correct yeah well lucky you (laughs) okay jean claude you've been at you were telling us that you have been at um duralong for um about seven and a half months now um but we turned the clocks back um when did your battle with addiction start for you uh for me my my battle would have started my uh, mid-teens i would say um, you know, just with starting to smoke cigarettes, which grew into smoking pot, mm. um, then just mixing with the wrong crowds, you know, mm. eventually turn into other substances. Yeah. So that sounds like a very, uh, perhaps sadly, sort of normal transition. Um, you're at that age of experimenting with, with things in the mid-teens and you and your mates are experimenting with, with, with smoking and then that led to what sort of drugs was it? Uh, so that eventually led on to um, like LSD uh, and speed mm. mainly was was a long time thing for me. Mm. But it started yeah. with cannabis. It started with cannabis. Yes. Yeah. What do you say to those people who say that cannabis should be legalised, but there are other people who say no, it's a gateway drug. Once you start taking cannabis, it leads to LSD and speed. Have you a view on that? Um, not really. Uh, I guess. Everyone's different. Uh, every, everyone's opinion is different. Yeah. Yeah, but for but for you, it did lead to. For me, it did. Yes. Yeah, and how old will you be at this time? I'm 47 at the moment. Yeah, how old at this time? When you oh, s- oh that, that was in my mid-teens. Yeah. 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 Did it affect your ability to find work? Um, not initially, because it was just a recreational kind of a thing. Oh, sort of weekends, um, that weekends, that sort of st- thing, and eventually when I was working full time, uh, I had a little bit more money, so you know, I did go into other drugs. Yeah, yeah. So once you've got that money in your pocket, you can then sort of um, buy the more expensive ones. Yeah, that's right. And um, that sort of led to a party scene for a while. Yeah, uh, pills and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Were you enjoying it at that time? Uh, I won't say no. Um, yeah, I did enjoy a lot. Of, had a lot of good times. Mm. So, what did the drugs give you that was missing in your non-drug life? What did they do for you? I guess for me, at, 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 uh, just being accepted by people uh, seemed to have made a lot of friends. Mm. Um, I don't know. Just uh, yeah, maybe. Not popular, but no, just accepted amongst yeah. people. I was always a bit of a bit shy. Yeah, we've had a, a number of people of ex sort of mention the same thing that they felt socially awkward, socially isolated, and uh, the drugs, or in some cases, drink. It just takes the edge off things, and they feel that they can socialise a little bit more easily. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and you can fit in, and you can make mates. You can be funny and witty, and all those things that you're not without the aid of those sort of drugs. Yeah, that's right. But it didn't stop there, did it? It got worse and worse for you, I guess. Yeah, so, you know, it did, it did get worse. Um, eventually I was doing speed, you know, pretty much every day. Uh, I did that for years and it was like the norm, pretty much. What does it do to your body? Uh, it, just, it just kept me going, you know. I, I was always, always pretty much had work. Yeah. Um, yeah, it sort of just kept me full of energy, working all the time. Did people at uh, work know that uh, that you had a problem? Uh, some of the people at work knew, you know, some of the people at work were friends who used as well. 
So it was not unusual for somebody to be taking drugs? No, not not in, in certain places that I work, no. It mm. was pretty common. What about relationships? How did it affect those and your, your relationships in your life, your, your mum and dad? Uh, well, I was with my, my parents. I, I, uh, I guess I drifted away. It became very distant for quite a while. Mm. Um yeah, and it just isolated a lot. Yeah. That would have been hard for them, wouldn't it? I guess it would have been, yes. Yeah. Do they have any inkling as to what... Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they, they knew what was yeah. going on, yes. But they probably didn't know what to do or what to say or who to turn to. Um, I, I guess they, they tried. They did try to uh, talk to me about it, um, but I did eventually have to open up and let them in. Yeah. And then you were telling me off uh, that you managed to um, get yourself off the drugs without any sort of outside help, without any counselling or therapy. You, you managed to stop. I did go to a few detoxes and uh, was in a mental health unit uh, a couple of times. And, yeah, I eventually managed to kick the drug habit. Mm. Um, I managed to kick that for a good couple of years before my drinking... I was always a drinker, mm. um, but then my drinking became probably in my early 30s till now uh, increased a lot. So you were able to sort of stop the drugs and the sort of harder drugs that you've gone on to, um, but you substituted alcohol for the drugs? Yeah, definitely substituted. I, I don't know if that's just my the way I am. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely started drinking a lot. And whereas drugs are illegal, and well, I I know they're sort of available on the streets. Alcohol, on the other hand, is legal and almost socially acceptable, isn't it? Yeah, well, it is. It's uh, it's pretty much everywhere you go, everywhere yeah. you look, you see ads. Yeah. Um, advertising alcohol. You know, it's everywhere you go. It's on the TV. It's at sports venues. It's part of our culture, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's correct. It Go is part of our culture. If you've got any problems, can have a few beers and talk it through with your mates sort of thing. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what everyone does after work. You know? Yeah, Friday night, a few beers on the way home. That's right. But for you, it wasn't just a few beers, was it? No, well, it started off as just a few beers and eventually got more and more and, yeah, and just, and just became unmanageable. It was just 24-7, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Um, and how bad was it before you realised you'd have to do something about the alcohol? How much were you consuming a day, for example? Uh, on the average day, I could easily consume at least four, sometimes five litres of wine. Mm. And then you realised, at some stage, this can't go on. Yeah, I thought it was OK, you know, I thought it was manageable. Uh, and then after losing a couple of jobs... And then as time went on, my health started to deteriorate. Um, it made me think, you know, that it is taking its toll on me. Yeah. And this is now a time which is, when you look back, it's a bit of a turning point in your life, isn't it? It's that point in your life where you decided that, yeah, you were at a fork in the road. You could carry on doing what you're doing, but it's going to take its toll on your health. Or you could do something different and that is sort of try and get help yeah that's correct uh, i mean i couldn't keep going living that way uh, i would probably have a very short life if i kept drinking the way i was yeah um and i, I do want to keep living so yeah. yeah yeah and that's when duralon came into your life yeah that's correct yes okay we're gonna leave it there we've had a look at the <laughs> rather the negative sides of john claude's life but we don't want to dwell on that anymore because this is a tale of hope and of inspiration um so we'll come back after some more music and we'll find out what happened to jean claude once he's sort of um booked himself into duralong and we'll have a look at that journey that he's been on for the last seven months but let's have some music first on this wednesday morning we're talking to jean claude um from the duralong transformation center he was telling us about the the journey that he's been on really since his mid-teens firstly it was drugs uh, started with cannabis but but led to other um more sort of hardcore drugs uh he gave that up he managed to stop that but substituted the drugs uh or substitute alcohol 
for the drugs. But he reached a point in his life where I think you were telling us, Jean Claude, your body was just telling you that he couldn't take any more. Is that a fair way of putting it? Yeah, that, that's correct. Yeah, my body was uh, it had had enough. It had had enough. Yes. Yeah. So at that point, you reached out for help. But wh why Duralong? Um, who mentioned Duralong to you? Where, where did where um, yes. did it come from? I'd heard of Duralong in a couple of the detoxes that I'd been to and um, it was local to me. Uh, so, yeah, well, I thought we'd, we'd try there first. Yeah, so you rang them up? You got in yeah, touch with I them? rang them up and uh, got on a waiting list and I had to ring up every week to check yes. in. Yes. Uh, but I decided to do two or three times a week checking in. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't long before I got the call up to come in. You are quite lucky because sometimes there is quite a lengthy waiting list isn't there is so popular yes there is yeah so you go along uh this is your first uh, rehab yes this is my first rehab yes so did it live up to expectations or down to expectations um yeah well when i when i first arrived at Duralong, um I, I didn't know what to expect of a, of a rehab facility mm. um i thought it was it would be more like a, a hospital setting uh, but to my surprise, it was definitely not. No, it's a five-star resort setting, isn't it? Yes, that's Swimming great. Swimming pools it's and lodges in the bush and everything. Yes, it's very, very serene, lovely. It, it is, but you're not there for a holiday. Was it hard those first few weeks when you checked in? Um, yes, the, the first few weeks was uh, was hard for me. Uh, I struggled a fair bit, mm. uh, but uh, was. I was welcomed by all the participants and staff there, which made made me feel at ease. Yeah. Did you ever think that, oh, I'm going to chuck this in, I'm, I'm out of here? Oh, I did think about it a couple of times, um, but the thoughts of uh, going back to that life mm. that I was uh, going to try and get rid of... Uh, was certainly a deterrent for me to stay... for me to stay. Yeah. And you have stayed. You've stayed there for over seven months. It's been a bit of a journey, I imagine, sort of unpacking your past. And uh, look, we're not asking you to go into detail, but but we know that they do quite a lot of sort of group session work and individual session work. It's, I imagine, quite confronting, quite hard work. Yes. Well, the the induction phase, which is goes from three to four weeks, was uh, pretty much just about. Uh, uh, learning about the place and, and rules and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, and then in level one, uh, which goes for six weeks, um, we, we learnt about things like grief, uh, stress uh, management, self-esteem, anger, those kinds of things. And then in, in level two, which goes for 16 weeks, we got a lot more in-depth mm. um, talking about uh, spiritual nature, you know, intellectual nature, uh uh, all those kinds of things. You know. Yeah. So you've got a lot from it, a lot from those level two programs. Yes, I definitely have. Uh, it's been a, a big learning curve. I did not think uh, that rehab was would be so involved, uh, but it is very necessary. And with the knowledge that they have now given you, when you look back on, you know, the 15-year-old, the 16-year-old Jean-Claude, can you see why is it he made some of those bad decisions in his life? Have they helped you? Ex have they helped you sort of understand the decisions you made? Yes, they, they've helped me understand why I did some of the things I did, uh, which which is good because I, I didn't know why I'd gone down that path. Mm, yeah, and of course knowing knowing that sort of. Um, uh, so it helps you for the future. You'll now know what your triggers yeah, well, are, now, now, what you've got to guard against. Now I have the the, the tools under my belt, um, so I can recognise uh, certain things that might be happening within myself, certain behaviours mm. uh, which I can, you know, uh, work on to stop me going back down that road. So before do or along, if certain feelings sort of came in. You know, certain emotions, certain feelings, or thoughts came in into your into into your life. You were perhaps just turned to alcohol or drugs to sort of push them to one side. But but now you're aware of what they are and what they're telling you about about things. Yes, now I'm very more uh, very much self-aware. Yeah. Um, 
of, 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 of things that I need to be aware of. Yeah. Uh, and they give you strategies other than drink and alcohol, uh, drink and drugs. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And of course, Salvation Army run the place. You knew that before you went. Uh, were you a spiritual person before you went? A uh, spiritual person, I guess, yes, I, I, I was. Uh, I did uh, attend church when I was younger, uh, but then dri drifted away from that in my teens. Mm. And uh, But now I've, I've found faith again, I guess. Um, yeah, it's some hope. Yeah, and going forward, looking forward to the rest of your life, because you're still relatively young, you've got another 20, 30 years at least. How do you see uh, life unfolding for you? Uh, I can see I can see life uh, a lot better. It's going to be definitely a lot better. Yeah. Uh, a lot longer. A lot longer, because it was that worry and concern for your physical health that prompted you to get in touch with Durong. Yes, and now, now I'm a, a much happier person too. And uh, I guess um, being with family and appreciating all those little things uh, will make my life a lot better. You say you're a happy pers a happier person. Are you more at ease with yourself, more accepting of yourself? Yes, I can sit with myself a lot better now. Yeah, that's good, yeah. isn't it? Um, it's amazing some of the stuff that they can do at Durong, isn't it? Yes. It's Bring peace to that that turmoil that's sort of in people's minds. Yes, that's right, yeah. yeah. So, what about family and friends, and um, how do things stand with um, relationships? Well, relationship with my, with my parents are, are improving all the time. Good. Um, so is the relationship with my wife. Yeah. Um, she's been a very big supporter of me. She stuck by yeah, you? She stuck by me through all the years of my drug abuse and wow. uh, since we met. Yeah. Um, and, that's that's and big, alcohol. isn't it? Because yes. she's... Yeah, it can't have been easy for her. As you know, it can't have been easy for her. But she's she's never forsaking you. She's always stood by you. She's always stood by me, you know. Yeah. So, how long, how much longer? You've been at Durrell now for seven and a half months. When when do you hope to graduate? Um, I'm probably hoping to graduate pretty soon now. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out uh, what I'm going to do and just setting up some outside support having yeah. a, a nice, strong network on yeah. the outside for when I leave. Yeah, yeah, because you don't want to just walk out um, and be on your own. You want to walk out with a sort of, as you've just said, a support network there uh, that you can turn to when, when things get tough. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. But you do have that great advantage, um, as you said, you've got parents who love you, you've got a wife that loves you and has stood through you through sort of the good times and the, and the bad times. So... Um, you must be encouraged for the future, is that fair to say? Yeah, that's fair to say. I'm yeah. um, very much looking forward to what it holds for me. Yeah. Yeah, God knows. He knows what he holds for you. Um, so I'm sure it's going to be good, John claude um, Look, we just pray that God continues to look after you and to look after your family and your relationships. We hope that he finds you uh, good, sort of good work when you sort of leave. Um, do along good work here on the central coast and just builds up those relationships in your life and sort of um, puts in place some really good support networks for you so that when those times come that you might be tempted to do what you did in the past no there are alternative strategies and we thank god that he's done all that he's done for you so you're going back tonight with it being wednesday the listeners know what I'm going to say. It's going to be roast dinner. What's it going to be tonight? Any idea? Chicken, lamb, beef? Uh, I'm not too sure, but it'll definitely be very nice. Yeah, and then that's followed by chapel night. Well, there's no singing, of course, at the moment, is there? No, singing's uh, still not permitted no, uh, due to COVID. Shame. Yeah, but, hmm. but there's a good message preached as well. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, and there's good fellowship and there's good community. Yes, yeah, so Wednesday night's always a fun night. Wednesday night's always a fun night. It's always a good night. Look, give our give our best to everybody back at Duralong, the um, all the participants in the program, and of course uh, the great staff. You were telling me earlier just how wonderful the staff were. Do you want to give a shout out to the staff there without mentioning names, but let the listeners know how good they are? They yes, def good. definitely. All the staff over there are, are just fantastic. Can't praise them enough. 
Yeah, I was asking Jean Claude off air what surprised him about Duralong, and that's one of the things that he mentioned. One was the country setting; it wasn't really like a health facility, but two, the staff were just amazingly. Uh, they're, they're just fantastic and he's so grateful for them so yeah big shout out to all the staff back at Duralong you've been listening to an encore presentation of the Duralong stories which can be heard live every Wednesday at 10am and repeated 8pm Sunday and 1am Wednesday right here on 94.9 rima.cc